Hello, Hello. I'm here with Alexi Briscott in San Francisco at the Selma Arts Building. And can you interview um can you introduce yourself to all the people who are not familiar familiar with you? Yeah, sure. My name is uh, Alexi Briclot. I'm working in uh, the comic books illustration and video games field since uh, something like 12 years. I've done a lot of uh, comic book pages for European and also uh, American clients. I've did two Spawn graphic novels for uh, Todd McFarlane. I've done covers for uh, Marvel, for uh, Dark Horse. I'm also one of the main artists for Magic the Gathering. I've did some works for uh, Dungeon and Dragons. I've also worked for uh, Blizzard. And uh, what else? I've did stuff, concept art for uh, video games company like uh, Ubisoft, NCSoft, some others. And since uh, more than three years now, I've co-founded my own uh, video game studio with some uh, partners. And we are now in the process, we are now working on a big, really ambitious video games. And what got you interested in drawing art? In drawing cards? Drawing art, in general. In general? I don't know, it was something linked about, uh, it's, it's all about passion. I mean, when I was a kid I was uh, sculpting, doing a lot of drawing. I think that one of my first uh, big uh, shock was uh, fantastic movies. I was really into uh, doing prosthetics and uh, special makeup. So when I was a kid I was doing some uh, space shifts, spaceships with uh, different parts taken from the garbage or uh, some other kids. I was also uh, doing some uh, makeups and sculpting. And then, because this field seems to be uh, no more successful, I mean the TGI was uh, appearing at this time, I chose the, uh, to, uh, to do much more drawing. And then I went to uh, an art school, learning about uh, advertising, graphic layouts, and uh, stuff like that. And I was always into uh, drawing or painting, fantasy stuff, sci-fi stuff. I did my own uh, portfolio, and then I, 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 uh, I went to uh, some clients. I get my first commission and then the commission went bigger and bigger and uh, much more uh, important and interesting. And what was your first commission for you to do? My first professional commission? Yes. It was, I don't remember exactly, for some really uh, small books. Maybe it was uh, role-playing books, role-playing game books. Some French one. Something really small. And then I uh, begin working for a video games company, then the second one, and I was dealing uh, between uh, my two jobs, working for video games, doing illustration and some uh, comic books. And then maybe two or three years after, I went uh, totally freelance, just working on uh, all the projects that I was uh, chosen, choosing, sorry. Um, chosen? That I was... That I choose. I'm sorry. Um, okay. Is it okay? The rest of uh, what I'm saying, uh, or is it a bit? Uh, it's hard to understand. Um, yeah. Okay. Okay. Understand I, it. It's okay, or uh, it's okay. Yeah. It's okay. Um, Maybe you will need some subtitles. Um, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe I'll work something out. Work something out with my graphics editor. Yeah in regards to subtitles, but anyway, what are your influences and inspirations? I've got tons of influences. I mean, uh, I love a lot of different artists. Some uh, of them are doing comic books, comic book artists. Some others are doing uh, illustration. I'm really into, uh, also into uh, graphic design. So there's a lot of designer, modern designers that I love, a lot of photographs. Uh, movie director, so I can say I, I would uh, I could feel pages of names of people or artists that are uh, influencing me. It's always changing. I don't know. That's too much. Wow, that's, that's a lot. 
But anyway, what kind of tools do you use to produce your works? Most of my work are done uh, digitally. I mean, just using a computer and a Wacom tablet. So uh, sometimes, most of the times, I'm just beginning my, uh, my work doing some uh, quick thumbnail, quick, quick sketches in my uh, sketchbook, then uh, taking photographs of it, and then it's all uh, digital. So you take some quick sketches first, and then you take some photographs, and then you scan it into the computer? Yeah, exactly. Or sometimes I'm doing the sketch uh, only on the computer, so all my stuff, so some of this stuff are done uh, only digitally with the computer. Wow. <laughs> Why? So do you think uh, there was much more traditional parts? in my process. It's interesting in how you produce your work. Out of all the games you have done work for, how many have you played so far? Uh, really few. I mean, uh, I'm not a, a real gamer, so I'm not playing uh, a lot. I'm playing much more uh, video games. I think Maybe I didn't play the, the video games I worked on on really uh Ah Yeah, as I said not so much. I'm not playing Magic the Gathering uh, at all. I just know a few hints of the rules, but I'm not playing uh, this game. I'm not playing ro uh, role playing game too. So I'm not a big player. So so practically, practically, you're a little bit like Shelly One, because she told me in one of her interviews that I did about one and a half months ago, she told me personally that she doesn't really know how to play Magic. Yeah. And I thought that was really interesting too. But I don't know, maybe for me, I wouldn't say I would have uh, lost my time playing, but when I'm focusing on some projects, like uh, doing graphic novels, working on video games. It's all about uh, telling stories, and in some way some kind of, uh, of game of itself. I mean, I'm not a player, it's not the same uh, process, but sometimes I prefer just being on the creative side, creative side sorry, and just uh, creating stuff than playing. And running it through the mill. Yeah. And how do companies approach you for contract? Uh, what do you mean? My clients? Um, how do companies that you're not working for right now approach you for contract? Uh, I think I didn't sense any portfolio or any uh, careers, mails since uh, years and years. I'm just answering to people who offer me uh, some jobs and I'm just choosing. I mean, uh, right now I've got the, the chance to be able to, uh, to choose. So there's a lot of projects that I can do or I don't uh, want to do. And now it's uh, just only uh, if people send me some uh, mail about a commission, if it's interesting, I say yes. Or uh, instead, I prefer to work on my uh, own project right now. And there's also, uh, as I said before, the, the big video game I'm working with, with my company. I see. How did Wizards approach you for contract? Uh, it was years ago. It was for the Kamigawa set, Kamigawa block. And uh, I went to a small uh, RPG uh, convention in France. I met some people uh, working for the European uh, Asbro Wizard of the Coast uh, office. They had a look at my stuff, at my portfolio, they really like it. And uh, so then after they sent some samples to the, the American, uh, the US main office. The art director there loved the, my work and so they asked me for my first commission, my first card. They seemed to be really happy with it and then they ask me for uh, doing more. I see. How do you sign your signature? Just have a piece of paper. How do you sign Just your signature? Just my usual signature. How has your signature gone over the years? You get enough light? And 
how has it evolved over the years? I can't remember. I mean, I was always signing with my uh, first name. Always signing with your first name? I see. This is my uh, real signature. I mean, not uh, my artist signature. That's your real signature? Yeah, with only my name. And before, I can't remember, I've used to uh, to use a lot of uh, different signature. I mean, sometimes for some works, I'm just signing with a, a A, like this, and a dot. Sometimes I was just signing for magic using some kind of much more elaborate signature. Something like that. In Something fact, like it depends. It depends on the project. The same way uh, as I'm thinking about my uh, commission, I like to be able to uh, switch or to change my rendering, my, uh, my style, just uh, um, trying to choose the best one for uh, each project. I mean, sometimes when I'm working for video games, I try to use some uh, be much more uh, synthetic style. I mean, with a uh, really few brush strokes, but if I'm working for Magic the Gathering, for example, I did a lot of uh, stuff the same way I would do in a traditional way. So I try to uh, keep a lot of brush strokes and uh, I try to uh, produce pictures that are looking like some kind of a real painting. Just because uh, in the history of the game, there's a lot of uh, illustrations that were made traditionally. And so it's some kind of a cultural um, trademark for the game. And so I'm always trying to uh, to keep that that style. Sometimes when I'm working for uh, comic books, I'm trying to use some uh, different style, trying to uh, keep some line in my drawing on some some uh, outlines. It depends. If Wizards gave you the chance to do one or two of the usual dual lands, would you accept? Some lands? The dual lands. What is it? Um, I happen to have one or ten of them on me. Being done by the visual art director, yes, for me first. I've shown it a dozen times to a few of the artists. Something like this. Ah, you mean just a uh, usual lens? Oh, is it something special? This is dual land, this is very special, it's on the reserve list. This is really few information. I don't know, it's I did a lens, a lot of, no, not a lot, but I did uh, several uh, lens for Magic the Gathering, and I love to, uh, to change it. I was talking just before of changing, uh, using some different style, and for me it's interesting to switch and not doing uh, always the same thing. I mean, I love doing uh, character concepts, I love drawing characters and uh, creatures, monsters and uh, so on, but it's really interesting uh, also to change, to move and to do, uh, to produce environments and lands. Interesting. How many of your works have been graveyarded so far? I've been in graveyard. How many of your works have been graveyarded so far? It's a term used by wizards when they say, uh, we commissioned a piece of work for a specific card, but then somewhere during development they decided to axe the card and then the art artwork went with it. I can't tell. I don't know. Sometimes when I'm working on a commission, I don't know exactly uh, what it is. Just maybe, maybe because uh, I'm not a, a player. Or uh, when I was doing, when I did the Planeswalkers, I didn't know uh, how successful they would be uh, supposed to be after. So I was just focusing on my uh, commission, focusing on the character concept oh, and... Uh, hey. hey! I was just uh, uh, checking to see if yeah, the lights are on, on back here and whatnot. They're usually off, but it's not a problem. Okay. I apologize for interrupting. Thank you. Anyway, uh, where were we? I was talking about the when I was doing the Planeswalkers, I didn't know exactly what I was working on. I mean, I just received commission, the price was a little bit higher than uh, usual usually, and uh, so I focused on uh, this stuff, it was my job, and then after I just realized uh, how important they were, 
just going to some uh, magic uh, tournaments or uh, magic events. Um, the funny thing is uh, that when I'm receiving a commission, most of the time they're using some uh, code names, code names about uh, the blocks, and this isn't the, they aren't using the, the final title of the cards. Most of the time the title is changing. So it's fun because uh, I'm used to work on uh, pictures and I just uh, register, uh, I'm just uh, working with a code name and then after when the card is released the name has changed. I see. What's your policy on mail-in signings? Uh, I didn't do any uh, mailing, mailing uh, signing. I'm just doing signing during a convention or events. Just I tried to do uh, to do it uh, years ago, but uh, at the end it was too much time consuming. I mean, just receiving the card, signing, and uh, sending them back. It's the same thing for uh, everything that I'm doing. I I, th I, I mean uh, comic books or uh, signing, doing drawings, my own uh, own books. So I just choose to uh, do to do th to do it to do signing only on uh, special speci specific events. How do you deal with grading companies? With what? With uh, grading companies. When they approach you to confirm an authentication of a signature on a specific copy of work. I don't understand, sorry. Um, Once again. Something like um, PSA, Beckett, those type of companies which grade collectible pieces of work. I don't know. I'm not really used to... Uh, I didn't understand the names that you've used. The PSA or... Uh, those are the names of grading companies. Yeah. I'm wondering how do you deal with them when they call you up and say and ask you, can you confirm the signature on this specific piece of work is genuine or not? I'm not really uh, used to do that or to uh, answer uh, or to uh, receive uh, this kind of call. I'm not sure if I understand uh, your question. Maybe I can read it. No, it's hard to. Uh... It's kind of hard. Ah, okay. Hard to read. I see. And, and what was it like to develop the Planeswalkers? It was really fun. I really like it, but as I said before, I didn't know uh, on what exactly I was working on. I was only focusing on uh, five or six characters. The funny thing is that uh, for the, the sixth one, it was Tezret at this time, but it was two years before the first Tezret was released, and the brief, the art brief was only uh, do whatever you want, but do it uh, good. So I was just doing some kind of concept art of my own, and then they really like it, they asked me for uh, some changes, and they put it in the story, in the backstory for all the planeswalkers, they asked for uh, some artist to work on it again and I think it was for the new Tezret they asked me to do uh, the new version of the card A third so version? Sorry? A third version or your take on, another, on one of the existing versions? I mean the, the first time that uh, Tezret appeared he was uh, uh, quite human and he didn't get his uh, white hair and also uh, all these... Uh, it was, uh, I think it's called Ethereum, this kind of energy with uh, eating his uh, own stomach and stuff like that. It was on my first concept, but for the first release of the characters they didn't use it, and so the character was much more uh, human looking, and then they, uh, they asked me for uh, doing another version which was much more closer to the, the first one than I've drawn, than I've did. Uh, the first time with uh, the five other first planeswalkers, Jace, Laliana, Garuk, Ajani, and Chandra. I see. Um, can you tell us about that comic book promo you are doing? For Sorry. Can you tell us about that comic book promo that you are doing for the upcoming Magic Comic? Comic. Mm, it was a short commission. I get a, um, a brief. I don't know if there is a name for this comics. It's only a Magic Gathering, and there's no uh, subtitle or. Uh... 
because I remember that there were other Magic the Gathering comics, and then they had some title, and then they, and then for a while it went dark, and then it just suddenly reappeared. Mm -hmm. You asked me about the process behind the cover. What happens with uh, with this one? Uh, yeah. Yeah. As I said, I just received a brief with some uh, concepts, references. Just his new planeswalkers. I can't even uh, remember his name. The new one. So I received what uh, we call the model sheets. Some kind of turnaround with uh, the characters. Uh, front view, back view, and side view, all the details, and then a quick sketch of the, the art director who showed me uh, um, uh, which kind of composition he was looking for. So it was really a, a small and really quick sketch, but all the information were uh, in it. He just asked me also to add some uh, some kind of uh, creatures in the back, creatures in the background, and so uh, then after it was uh, up to me to uh, to do something good with all of that. And can you? This might be delving a little deep into the development field a little bit. Can you tell us about the latest series of descriptions you've gotten for Planeswalkers and what everyone should be expecting in the near future? Uh huh. So, how many descriptions did you get for Planeswalkers? For the first one? Um, for. The next set. You don't have to tell me any names. And just remember. I can tell. I can reveal anything about the the next set. What can I say about that? If, if you didn't get any, then I get really few information. I can uh, tell a lot. I did just recently two different cards. They were not linked to any uh, new or uh, Pence Walkers. And I was just uh, four or five years, uh, uh, four or five months ago, I was in Seattle in uh, the Wizard of the Coast Office and I was uh, taking part into the push. Uh, it's the name of the uh, three week work session made with uh, we were only four concept artists and we were just focusing on developing the, the next sets just we are not uh, drawing or painting uh, final cards but we're just focusing on uh, new characters new creatures new environments for the next sets but I'm not allowed to, uh, to talk about that okay I understand oh, they will what's, kill it, me. what's it like to be an art director for video games for what What's it like to be an art director for video games? It's completely different. It's maybe harder. I mean, in my uh, company now, we uh, we are two art directors. I'm working with an uh, other uh, awesome artist. We're sharing a lot. It's not only about doing pictures. It's much more about giving a direction. And there's much, much more uh, other uh, people to deal with. I mean, uh, video games, it's a story, it's gameplay uh, after uh, everything, before everything. I mean, at first, it's gameplay, it's uh, all about having fun playing and uh, it's entertainment. So you're not drawing or... Uh, I mean, when you're drawing, on, when you're creating something, you have to deal with uh, the game designers, the programmers, the animators all of the, the different uh, field composing the, the whole team it's much more about uh, sharing and finding the, um, the right direction as I said sometimes I'm still painting and doing pictures but sometimes there's a lot of uh, brainstorms talking and stuff like that okay. And how did um, your company Don't Nod get founded and what's the story behind it? It's a really uh, awesome story. We are five different co-founders doing something... Uh, we are doing... we all doing something completely different. There are two uh, producers, 
one producer, which is now a CEO. There is a, a really close friend with a director, creative director. There is also uh, another uh, production uh, director. And there is a fifth one, is a, a really successful and famous writer in France. And at first we don't get any uh, money at all, we just uh, have worked with some of these guys before on some project for uh, Ubisoft or uh, for some other uh, companies. And then uh, every week we begin sharing about uh, some kind of uh, dream projects. And uh, each week it was growing uh, a little bit more. And then we uh, met some uh, business angels, two of them who, uh, became, who felt in love with the team and uh, our projects and they give us enough money to uh, build a company and to uh, hire people so we have to uh, build a world team, to build the, the world studio, the world process behind it and right now we are, uh, there is 70 people in the team I see. A crazy story what was it like to develop Dreamblade? Dreamblade? Yeah. Ah, it's an old story, this one. They sent me an email just talking about the new uh, figures uh, game. So I got at first with really few information. I just remember they told me that it was about uh, Dreamscape, about Dream, something really weird. So I began to uh, think about it, to take uh, a lot of notes. Uh, notes. I sent them uh, some email and I just remember I was throwing some kind of uh, really weird ideas talking about uh, some artists like uh, Escher, some, uh, some modern and uh, contemporary artists finding a lot of, uh, I mean, crazy ideas that I would have loved to, uh, to develop and then they sent me another email just uh, saying to me that, uh, hey, uh, slow down, uh, this game is for uh, 14 years old average people so it's all about dream but you have to uh, to go on uh, with the concept it was really fun to do usually they give me uh, some sketch or uh, some photographs of the, the figurines of the, the figures the small figures and so my job was to uh, put them in some kind of uh, seductive and efficient illustration there was some color information for all of them and then it was my job to uh, make them uh, as beautiful as I can. I see. Do you hope in the future that some of the art that comes out of the Magic Comics or even as make it onto the actual cards? I'm sorry? Um, do you hope in the future that some of the art that comes out of the Magic Comics or even the advertising of the game make it onto the actual cards in the near future? It could be cool, yeah. Because I remember back in 2001, in one of my Nintendo Power magazines, they were mm -hmm. running a promo on 7th edition, where they showed a mural on one end, and then when you flip the page over, they put the card frames on some of some of the creatures, creatures on top of the mural. I thought those were the actual pictures on the actual cards, but then when I checked the actual cards, it's like, what? I'm like, what? I don't know, you're talking about making some uh, stronger lin link relationship between the comic books and, uh, and the cards? Yeah, yeah? something like that. <laughs> It'd be really interesting. So are you okay on that right now? I don't know, yeah. it could be fun, but it's not uh, at all the same, uh, okay. the same thing. I mean, dealing, dealing with uh, comic books, it's all about uh, telling a story, and when you are focusing on a card, just making some uh, pretty pictures. Sometimes it could be it could be funny just yeah to use some cards and put them in, uh, in comic books, and I think even for me because it's a, a big company there are a lot of uh, awesome artists. It could be fun to share. I mean uh, when I've, I've done really few pages of uh, interior pages, comic book pages for them, and I think they so they send me some. Uh, difference is done with uh, some other artists so uh, I use some previous pictures and I've 
painting them uh, my own way, but I was uh, widely influenced by uh, these pictures. I see. Are you aware that the World Championship is going on right now? Imagine. Not at all. Interesting. Is there anything that your company is developing for the Kinect? Uh, I think that uh, I'm sorry, but I can't uh, tell a lot about uh, what we're doing with my company. We've got a website, and right now there is a uh, really few information about the, the first game we are uh, working on. What I can say it's just for uh, it's developed for uh, PS3 and uh, Xbox. It's the official uh, information. There is a short uh, summary of the story and. Uh, not the story, but the, the setting and the, the context of the game. And right now we've got uh, more than half of the game which is uh, playable. We've got all the, the different gameplays implemented. And we have to finish uh, the game for the uh, end of uh, 2012. I see. How many art workshops like these have you been to so far? I think it's maybe my 10th uh, or 11th. Uh, I've done some of them in, uh, in France, in French, so it's easier for me to uh, share information and uh, talk with people. And uh, maybe the first workshop I've taken part in was uh, the one Massive Black did in Prague. It was uh, maybe six years ago, maybe more, five years or six years ago. And since I'm lucky enough to uh, to be invited uh, to all of them, so that's really cool. Interesting. What do you think about San Francisco? It's a nice city. I've got uh, um, friends in France who told me that uh, it was some kind of uh, maybe some of the most European city uh, of the U.S. I've traveled a lot, not, not a lot. I've traveled a little bit in uh, in the U.S., but. Uh, I like the mood, and uh, maybe I would love to uh, to live there. It's a really nice city. Maybe the only thing that uh, that shocked me, but uh, there is something I don't know. I'm not feeling the same way in Paris or in some of those cities. Uh, sometimes I feel some kind of a really uh, strong um, difference between uh, homeless people and uh, rich people. I mean, sometimes the same street you can see a limo and uh, some homeless people. I'm not really used to that, usually, so something the first time that was a little bit shocking me. But just talking about the architectures, everything, the, the overall mood and the people, I really like it. If you had any of your... If you had any cards you wanted or Kubo to make 3D, which ones would they be? You talk about creatures or characters, um, putting them in 3D? Kubo. Um, Okubo is ah, a Japanese Okubo. art. Yeah, I've got some of them already. I went uh, in Chizuoka, it was uh, three years or four years ago, and uh, these guys uh, gave me three different cards. But at this time, I was not really uh, in love with my uh, the art that he chose. I mean, it's not my uh, best illustration. I can't remember exactly which one it was. But I think. For this kind of work, you have to deal with uh, uh, pictures with a lot of different, uh, a lot of depths and different layers. So it's easy to uh, cut them and to uh, build the different, different uh, layers. So I don't know. Maybe for example, a planeswalker would be a little bit uh, too flat. I mean, there's only one character in the background behind, and so it's much more better to deal uh, with picture with a, a foreground, a midground, and a background, and a lot of different uh, layers in between. Maybe one of my uh, last one. I don't know. I can't tell. I've done some of them. I was just thinking about uh, some Phyrexian demon, or maybe Carnifex demon, the final name. <coughs> some kind of uh, big creatures with wings and uh, metal parts. And I just use uh, some strong perspective. I mean, the creature is coming. Uh, at you, at the viewer, and maybe it could be uh, interesting to uh, just cut the head, having the head in the foreground, and then the body, and uh, the different parts. You mean Tom Stalker? Yeah. Some no, not Tom Stalker. Uh, 
Yeah, I think the, the final name is a uh, Carnifex Demon. It was for uh, Phyrexia. It's a card that I've done uh, two years ago, something like that. What titles and games should the general public be expecting from your company in the near future? Uh, right now we are focusing on a first project. So it's not a fantasy, it's a science fiction. It's for us, it's building a, a close future, a believable future. So we are using, we are studying and using all the current trends and pushing them in the, the story is happening in 2084. So it's some kind of a close futures. We're not dealing with a uh, space opera. There's, there's no uh, big creatures with a uh, hundred of tentacles and stuff like that. But it's not some kind of uh, historic stuff. We are not doing uh, some kind of uh, school study or not school study. Or, uh, it's ent entertainment first. So we are trying to build this be uh, to build a believable futures, and then on top of that, we are adding uh, some. New layers for fun. You have your clock. No. Okay. I think I have to move quickly. Um, yes, we're about to get to the end. And what's your policy on using your art for your playmats? Playmats? Yes. I don't know. People that are using some of my pictures for uh, printing mats? Maps? Yeah. Mats? Playmats. Like something like mouse pad. Yeah, like. that's cool. That's fun. Sometimes I'm just uh, when it's done with uh, by without the course there is some products that I'm not aware of uh, their existence. I mean sometimes discovering them uh, into uh, during uh, events. That's cool. Just looking at my picture in some different uh, specific uh, supports. It's fun. And uh, what do you think? Of, and. Uh, what is your view on New Media Animation, the Taiwanese news company that animates the news? The News Magic uh, the Gathering uh, uh, cartoon? Uh, no, the Taiwanese company that animates the news. The news? The Taiwanese news company that animates the news. I didn't understand. Uh, animate news? News. What is There's news? this news company known as New Media Animation. It's a Taiwanese company. They animate the news. Yeah. As in, they take some sort of newsreel that happened someplace in the world and then they try ah, to okay. it. Ah, okay, I understand. It's uh, frightening. I mean, I didn't uh, like it at all. I'm not talking about animation or uh, the rendering. I, I was thinking at first you were still talking to me about uh, magic or... Uh, that's why I didn't understand uh, the question. And I really, I really uh, didn't like it because it's... We're not talking about art or uh, fantasy or stuff like that. Some uh, real events, and they uh, show them, show these events like uh, if it's completely real. I mean, sometimes you don't know if uh, if it's some crimes or uh, stuff like that. If it really happens, but when it's some kind of uh, the way they are showing them, it's like it's uh, completely real, and there's no doubt about uh, anything. So I feel like it's really, uh, that's really good. Okay. And okay. Uh, before we conclude, I have the cards. I have 14. Okay. I had more at home, but I decided not to bring them.
Here you go. Thanks. Well, you have a speaking engagement. Yeah. Thanks for your time. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Thanks. And good luck. Thank you.